CGI and motion capture technology has come a long way in the past couple of decades. It has come so far that most of the time, we can't even tell which elements of movie scenes have been touched by CGI. I find motion capture fascinating, and it's so exciting to see how quickly we're improving the technology. Since you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering where motion capture started. To find out, we gotta hop in a time machine and head back to California in 1878 where photographer Edward Mybridge was being funded by the governor of California to invent photography methods to capture the motion of a galloping horse to discover if all four hooves ever left the ground at once. After he successfully captured the horse in motion, proving that all four hooves did in fact leave the ground at once, Mybridge was invited to continue his research at the University of Pennsylvania, where he went on to capture thousands of photographs of animals and humans in motion. It wasn't known at the time, but these photographs contributed significantly to the concept of motion pictures to come. Fun fact, when Edward Mybridge was on one of his photographic expeditions, his wife, Flora, had an affair with drama critic Major Harry Larkins. When Mybridge discovered this, he tracked down Larkins and shot and killed him. It doesn't end there. Later, when being tried for his murder, his defense was behavior changes after a stagecoach accident he was in. But the jury didn't buy that defense. Instead, he was acquitted on the grounds of justified homicide. Clearly, murder was not taken as seriously back then. I mean, he did do your wife, so I guess he deserved it. Anyway, Moybridge's work did lay the foundations for the motion capture we know today. So thank you, Mr. Mybridge. The next notable step in the direction of motion capture occurred in 1915 when animator Max Fleischer invented rotoscoping, a technique that could produce realistic movement of an animated character by tracing over each frame of live action footage. This method caught the eye of Walt Disney, who first used it in the production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Fun fact, the same video footage was reused for rotoscoping in several Disney animated films to cut down on time and cost. As you can tell, the dance in Snow White was recycled when they animated this scene in Robin Hood. Beauty and the Beast borrowed the ballroom dance from Sleeping Beauty. And even the more recent Princess and the Frog borrowed this scene from Sword in the Stone. Next, we'll fast forward to the 1950s when animator Lee Harrison III was in the process of developing the world's first mocap suit, which could record and animate an actor's movements in real time, translating them into rough animation on a monitor. Over the next two decades, engineers improved the bodysuits, lining them with active markers and using special cameras to track the movements, which produced digital animations that were far more detailed and accurate. One of the earliest examples of a 3D animated film that was entirely animated using motion capture via mocap suits was Sinbad, Beyond the Veil of Mists. All those in favor of sailing beyond the veil, say aye. The result definitely wasn't attractive, but this method was pretty revolutionary and provided a jumping off point for engineers and animators to create characters in live action films that were completely computer generated using mocap such as Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars The Phantom Menace, and the antagonist of many of my childhood nightmares, Gollum from Lord of the Rings. During the filming of the third Lord of the Rings movie, a breakthrough was made when they discovered that they were able to film on set while using motion capture at the same time. Well, today's uh, rather special because it's, it's the first time we're attempting to sh actually shoot on 35mm and shoot the motion capture at the same time. While previously all motion capture was separate from the actual filming. It took them till nearly the end of the third movie to figure this out, so they weren't able to really take advantage of this for the trilogy. But jumping ahead another decade, when Gollum came back to the screen in The Hobbit, they had had plenty of time to further advance the technique and technology of motion capture. In The Hobbit, because Circus was able to act out his part with his co-actor Martin Freeman, while also doing the motion capture at the same time, it made the dynamic between the characters way more believable and organic. The motion capture itself was far more advanced, as well as the technology used to render the character. They were able to develop far more realistic and accurate muscular and skeletal structures, and using a system called tissue, they were able to very accurately control the facial muscles and skin tension of the character. In addition, a ton of research went into how light reacts to skin and eyes, and from that, a technique called subsurface scattering was implemented. 
This not only allowed light to reflect off of the surface of the skin, but also let light pass through the first layer, bounce around, and then randomly reflect outward, resulting in translucency. This not only makes the skin look more alive, but it makes it easier to see the texture details like fine lines, moles, blemishes, pores, and hair on the surface of the skin. Fun fact, the very first scene that Martin Freeman filmed for The Hobbit was the scene with him in the troll caves with Gollum. Mocap has continued to evolve since The Hobbit and other movies that made breakthroughs in motion capture like The Polar Express and Avatar. There are now many different kinds of motion capture from marker-based systems that track physical markers on the actors to markerless systems that use software that tracks an actor's movements through identifying specific features on the actor. There's a long way to go before markerless mocap becomes industry standard for films, but there's a lot of experimenting and developing happening with motion capture, and I think we're going to see some very impressive innovation in the next decade. And you know what that means. The more advanced it becomes, the easier it becomes, and the cheaper it becomes, which means the more accessible it will become to smaller filmmakers and individuals. For example, I just downloaded an app on my iPhone that records facial motion tracking and lets you connect the live feed to Maya or Blender so that you can apply it to a rig and see the animation in real time. How cool is that? I'm very excited to see where motion capture goes in the future, especially with the prospect of it being integrated into VR. I would love to hear what you guys think of mocap technology in the comments. And if you learned something from this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. To cut down on downloaded an app on my iPhone occurred in 1915 when animator no. Bandit, stop. The next notable step in the direction of motion. Bandit. And if you learned something from this video, I would really appreciate it if you give.